What is going on, everybody? The War Chariot back with episode 53 of our Dark Souls 2 Scholar of the First Sin walkthrough. Last episode, we beat Nash, we beat Aldia, we beat the Throne Watcher and Defender, took down everybody, and that wraps up the main section of the game. Now, this is a walkthrough, so I'm going to do everything um, as close to 100% as possible without, uh, you know, it getting ridiculous. So now we got a few wrap-up areas to do. This will begin our wrap-up videos. Uh, this video, we are going to probably do Belfry Luna. That'll be the next, uh, next progression. Uh, so Servant's Quarters is the closest bonfire to Belfry Luna. Belfry Luna does have its own bonfire, but you have to beat the Gargoyles in order to get there. So that's where we're going to go first. Um, and uh, then we'll do... Probably do uh, Purgatory next. And then we'll do Luna. Or not Luna, Soul. Belfry Soul is a short area, so we might throw a few other things in there, uh, wrap-up wise. And uh, we'll move on from there. Now, we did not fight this Pursuer yet. So let's just show him how much of a scrub he is. Yeah, I remember when those kind of hits would scare the shit out of me because they would take so much damage. But now... Yeah, stand right up, bro. I've taken out a few too many of you. Easy money. Get that twinkling tea. Pick up our large club. Mimic check. And uh, let's see what goodies are in this chest. Priest chime, so not bad. I think we already have one. But not bad nonetheless. Now this looks like an ordinary room. But, Pharaoh's Contraption, as you probably already noticed. Shove a stone in that guy's mouth there. And voila. Belfry Soul. Or, Luna. Not Soul. Luna meaning moon, Soul meaning sun. Uh, so yeah, that guy's annoying as fuck. He is in Belfry Luna and Soul, and he can you can use that to join the Bell Covenant. Um, probably one of the more annoying covenants. You get invaded left and right in that covenant. So you can do that if you'd like. Shrek that guy. Jump down here. Um, you'll notice that uh, we pop out back near this guy you can talk to. But there's also a room back in there. Now, if you jump down the other hole... Not this one, but this one. You pop out in that room, and as you can see, there's the guy out there you talk to. Right. Right there. Um, and there's a chest and an item in here. Blue tear stone ring. Uh, useful for sorcery builds, I believe, and mages. And also some skeptic spice, which will be useful in PvP later. So that's the first two levels of this area cleared out. And now for the next two. It looks like there's a shade right there. I might come back and talk to him in a second. But we got... Uh, these two fuckboys. Easily shrekt in two hits. They do hit hard. So don't let them get uh, you know more than two hits on you. They can kill you if you have low health. Or if you don't have a build that has high defense. So a Bellkeeper Shield, pretty basic drop for them. That used to be a rare item, but they uh, up the drop rate on them, it seems. Yeah, as you can see, they can, they, their, uh, their attacks can build up on you. Am I going to get wrecked here? Nope. Wow, I actually killed them on the backswing. Not bad. This 
some twinkly or not twinkly but twilight and a gem uh there's a i think there's a soul packet as well up here somewhere you just want to check behind all four of these little stone wall areas i think it's right here yep some more skeptic spice and then, uh, as you can see, the bell, it's kind of like right there. Pull the lever. And sometimes you get invaded here, sometimes you don't. Anyway, that gate that was blocking the fog gate down there. Now we'll release. As you can see in a second here. And uh, there we go. So now we're all ready for this fight. I'm gonna buff this. This fight's pretty easy. We're gonna be taking out these gargoyles in probably three hits. Uh, this fight doesn't get hard till NG plus two. At least I think so. As you can see. Pretty easy to take down. Three hits. Killing them faster than they can spawn in. Oh. Get out of there. Okay, now I just need to chug. Perfect. Double chug just in case. Baseball bat. Get the fuck out of here. Pretty easy fight. Took probably 30, 45 seconds. Like I said, NG plus 2, plus 3, that gets hard. Uh, just because they do a lot more damage and their health is a lot more. And there's a soul packet right there you side pick up. That's the only soul packet in this little section here, I believe. Um, let me just double check. What they could have done, NG plus or ng plus they could have made it so that gargoyle spawns in ng plus two that one and ng plus three that one so you'd have three extra to spawn in because there's only ever three in at a time so that would just make the fight last a little bit longer but uh as you can see they did not go that route also ng plus there will be two phantom dogs down here uh the regular game there used to be two regular dogs all the time but they uh, switch that, so Southern Ritual Band. Decent pickup there. Here is the bonfire, which we'll put it on the map for our travel uh, spots there. This area, we should be able to wreck all these dogs in one fell swoop. Or close to that. And uh, good doing so, because... Our friend Vorg the Sinner, Vorgel, who will get his fucking shit pushed in. Three swings. If you fight him uh, when you're first coming through Bastille, it is a challenge because you're not overpowered like I am, but me being overpowered, uh, not that bad. And you do get a dragon tooth here. I didn't know that. I had no idea you get a dragon tooth there. So that's two dragon tooth, one one playthrough. That's not bad at all. So now you can dual wield those if you like. And there are enchanted falchion, which is the only one in the game, I believe, that you can actually pick up like that. So that wraps up Belfry Luna. Let's see what we're at here. Just about ten minutes, not bad. Um, do we want to go to Belfry Soul while we're at it? Why not? Why not go to Belfry Soul while we're at it? Belfry Soul will probably take 10 minutes in itself. Maybe actually a little bit longer, but it'll make for about 25 minutes. Not bad at all. They should have put a boss in Belfry Soul. That would have been kind of neat. Like, I mean... They could have put gargoyles again, but like they could have gotten creative with it. Yeah, 
Yeah, so he's going to break that bridge out. Or at least he's going to try to. There we go. Congratulations, you broke the bridge. Now I'm going to come wreck you. Just wait. Just you wait. Yeah, yeah, get your hits in while you can. Get your hits in while you can, because here comes my sword, buddy. You too. What do you think you're doing? I one-shot you, man. Looks like I knocked his head off there. Alright. So the entrance to Belfry's soul is this way through the door, obviously. Obviously, we locked stone that earlier on. Open that, climb up this ladder, and the bonfire should be on the left here. Um, well, on the left right there. This bonfire is the only one in Belfry Soul. Belfry Soul approach. Now, this area is all about them phantoms. They love phantoms in the Belfries. There's that guy again. At first I got up here, when I first played the game, I was like, wow, boss right away? Damn. That's harsh. But no, it's these fuckers. And more importantly... Uh, unless that's only NG+. plus. Huh. Actually... I don't think I've ever been up here uh, with Scholar, because look at this shit. I can, I can tell what they're trying to do here. Huh. Really? He stood in front of that? And that's just off to the right where we can't get at it. But no worry, we will fuck this bitch up faster than she can swing that spear. Two shots. Maybe that one was meant to hit her. Like I said, this uh, area we are incredibly over leveled for, uh, as well as the uh, other Belfry. But in my opinion, why come through it uh, unoverleveled when you don't have to? These areas are all optional. You can beat the game and move on to an entirely new playthrough without even seeing these areas. But in my opinion, uh, get everything 100% just so when you, if you want to do PvP, you got it. And that guy's normally a bitch, but as you can see, fucking wrecking. And this is also a very popular spot to get invaded. Uh, usually as soon as you pull that lever. Pick up some spice there. If we do get invaded, we will handle it. As you can see, that says do it because of that whole invasion thing. Another kind of uh, fantastic view here, although the uh, resolution of all that is pretty shitty. Um... Nice vast open land there. Kind of kind of what it'll look like for the DLC. Bellkeeper Phantom, I believe, invades right about now. Avalon dude. We're going to wreck you in two hits. Especially with that sweet, sweet crit damage. You can hear that crit damage go off. It sounds kind of like a, a can crushing. It's like a ch sound. At least that's the best I can describe it. If you've used the gauntlets, you know what I'm talking about. Alright, so Phantom doesn't want to invade. Yet again, I think this is NG+, because I'm so used to coming through here. Not NG, but NG+, plus or plus one, two, and beyond. Um, I mean, if you kind of think about how we got to Iron Keep, we came up through Harvest Valley and Earthen Peak and all that. Like, where the hell is that? Like... That's one thing that's a little confusing about the level design. Like, how the hell did you get from Earth and Peak Harvest Valley, even like Majula, to this? Like, this seems like we're way the fuck out in the middle of nowhere. I don't know. And like, Earth and Peak and that are below this, because you like come up an elevator and all that. I don't know. It's confusing. It's one thing Dark Souls 1 was better at. Uh, the levels connected and they all made sense in how they connected. Even though some of them might seem a little confusing, most of it connected pretty easily and was understandable. 
Dark Souls 3, headed by the same guy that made Dark Souls 1, Bloodborne. So, it'll probably, uh, be a little more like Dark Souls 1 and make a little more sense in Dark Souls 3. At least we hope. Immolation. That's the spell you can set yourself on fire with. Kind of pointless, but I have seen PvP builds where they set themselves on fire and chase after the person. Basically do area of effect damage to them until they die, and then eventually they die. It's kind of hilarious, actually, when it works. Be like, I killed you by killing myself. Ha ha ha. Also, it induces incredible amounts of salt. Black Knight Greatsword. And Protective Chime and whatever else that was, I could not look at it fast enough. So we jump back down here, and as you can see, we're popped out here. Um, so that is Belfry Soul. Uh, and Belfry Luna. All complete. Next video, we'll probably do Undead Purg. Um, that'll probably be long enough to be its own video. And then we'll go do Dark Lurker, which will probably be its own video, but it'll be a little bit longer. Um, after that, we might do one or two more wrap-up videos. Uh, and then we'll begin with the uh, Sunken King DLC. And from there, move on through the DLCs and uh, continue with that. So that's going to be it for this one, guys. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video... Uh, leave a like and subscribe, and we'll catch you guys in the next one.